Modern Warfare 2 has finally officially released on all platforms and you already know I've got for you guys the best settings for PC to maximize our FPS, keep our latency as low as possible and achieve the best visibility in multiplayer. So let's waste no time, jump straight into the settings in the display area with display mode. You need to make sure this is set to full screen exclusive. Modern Warfare 2 is running with DirectX 12, a very good version of DirectX 12. And with that, you get really, really smooth alt tabbing in and out of the game, even when you're running full screen exclusive. So there's absolutely no reason to run full screen borderless in this game. Full screen exclusive will always give you the best FPS and latency because the game gets all of the dedicated power when it's actually running. It's not trying to render anything in the background. Full screen exclusive has to be the option here. Display monitor, simply just, you'll know you've got this set correctly because you'll have the game on the correct monitor. Don't have it displaying on the wrong monitor. Display adapter, you'll probably only have one option here. For me, it's my 3070. For you guys, it'll be whatever your GPU is, but just make sure that you haven't accidentally got a uh, integrated GPU, something running off of your CPU or something else displaying here. Just make sure you've got your most powerful GPU set. Screen refresh rate, make sure this is set to the maximum option or at least what matches your monitor's refresh rate. For most people, the auto selection here should be correct. It even shows the number, which for me is 240 hertz, but just make sure that it lines up. Don't be running uh, a lower refresh rate than your monitor can handle. It'll make your game feel horrible. Display resolution, set this to your native resolution. It shouldn't let you come in here and do any upscaling unless you're running some sort of a DSR in uh, NVIDIA control panel, which a lot of people won't be anyway. So once again, auto should do the job here, but I like to just select the option anyway and ensure that I'm actually running at my 1080p resolution that my monitor is at. Then dynamic resolution uh, can be a useful thing to gain some FPS, but it makes your game look pretty horrific uh, and your resolution starts changing all over the place, which doesn't make for a good gameplay experience or good visibility. So we're going to keep this off. Aspect ratio, you should be able to leave this on automatic. Uh, in here, you can set your aspect ratio for us. 16 by 9 is what we're actually running at. And it's what most of you guys will be running at. But automatic should do the job. If you've got an ultra wide or a, or a wide monitor, it will handle that for you. V-Sync in gameplay and menus, keep that off. V-Sync is a killer for latency. Uh, it does help with a bit of screen tearing, but with decently high refresh rate monitors, you're not going to notice much screen tearing anyway. And uh, we keep much better latency keeping this off. Custom frame rate limit, quite an important one here. Make sure you've got it set to custom rather than, rather than unlimited. And then click the show more button. In gameplay custom frame rate limit, you want to push that that all the way to the right make sure we're not limiting our fps in the game at all but then for the menu custom frame rate limit i recommend putting this on something around 100 rather than keeping this maxed out this way when you're in the menu it's going to still feel uh, decently smooth to move your mouse around and do your classes and stuff and select your game modes but you're not completely burning out your gpu sat in a menu remember the menu will likely just run at max frame rate because it's not very intensive so limit the frame rate give your pc a break when you're not in the game and then for out of focus custom frame rate limit you want to lower this even more i've got this down at 30 so that when i do alt tab out the game the game uses barely any system resource if i need to go check something on the internet or do another quick task it makes it easier to do that because my whole pc isn't lagging from cod running in the background very important that you set this restart shader optimization this is an option you can check um and and do if you have any problems with stuttering in the game uh, sometimes shaders get a bit me messed up and what this does is it deletes the shader cache and then it does all the shader re-optimization stuff again uh, which can fix a lot of problems so come here if you have any problems display gamma you want to keep this to 2.2 in most circumstances this is for if you have a monitor uh, if you are playing on a tv and you've got your pc linked up to a tv then 2.4 will look better but for most of us pc players 2.2 is the option brightness set this to 55 rather than 50 uh, having this slight bump in brightness helps out visibility a ton then we've got constrain mouse to game window, which we can't set anyway because we're running full screen exclusive and focus mode, which you want to turn off. This is a thing where it makes a black overlay appear on your second monitor. Not something you want to do. Sounds resource intensive in some way and not very useful. So keep that off. And then high dynamic range. I don't have a HDR monitor, but even if you do, you want to keep this off for multiplayer because uh, it can throw some weird visibility problems uh, in favor of like immersion and stuff. So we want to keep this off. 
Now let's get into the nitty gritty bit of the quality area. So quality presets shouldn't matter what you set here because we're going to be changing things further down anyway. So just leave that. Render resolution, ensure this is at 100. That means 100%, i.e. we are rendering at the resolution which we selected earlier. If you start turning this down to a different number, you're actually only rendering at a certain percentage, um, either upscaling or downscaling the resolution. Not something you want to do uh, in general. If you need to gain FPS at the end, uh, there's better ways in terms of downscaling you can do it. Speaking of which, upscaling and sharpening, there's a couple of different options here. For most people, what I'd recommend as a base is to select Fidelity FX CAS. This is a sharpening uh architecture technology that you can enable and by enabling it and then putting it to around 75 you get some really really good sharpness on the game the game looks incredibly crisp we had this in vanguard it looked great uh, i'm really excited to use this in warzone because it's going to help out visibility a ton however if you're really struggling with fps at the end of all this guide come in here go to amd fsr and then try running ultra quality or quality Quality will give you slightly better FPS, but you'll lose a bit of visibility. Ultra quality will give you the better quality um, or the best better visibility, but you won't get as much FPS. Both of these can give you just overall better frames if you are struggling. However, as I said, for most people, Fidelity FX Cast, put it to a 75, that's a nice option for really good visibility. Then we've got anti-aliasing. You've only got two options here, T2X and Filmic T2X, both using SMAA at least, which is good anti-aliasing. It's not a bad like FXAA or something that you get in some games that looks kind of horrible and blurry. Unfortunately, you can't turn off anti-aliasing in this game for whatever reason. So the best we can do is choose the SMAA T2X, not the Filmic. This way uh, you'll get overall sharper visuals and less blurriness that you get from the filmic option then for anti-aliasing quality set this to low for best performance and video memory scale just max this out this is going to make sure that you're using up the maximum amount of vram possible in game now if you start having any stuttering and it turns out that you're using some vram in some other application maybe you're doing streaming or you're doing recording you may get better performance i.e less stuttering by potentially turning this down to 80. However, for most of you guys just playing the game, put this to 90 and you'll be doing good. Then, texture resolution. I would recommend dropping this to low. Not very low. Very low looks horrendous. Um, low looks decent um, and it gives you the best overall performance this is really all based on vram usage anyway it doesn't have a massive effect on fps but you can game a little, a little bit of performance just by turning it down to low um, but yeah never go as low as very low no need really no need then at texture filter and isotropic leave this on high this is a really useful setting for visibility and overall game quality in terms of the visuals and it uses absolutely no performance to do this it never does anisotropic filtering so you don't need to worry about it. For nearby level of detail and distant level of detail, put these both to low. It's not all that useful really in multiplayer. Anything that potentially wouldn't render in would be stuff that we don't care about anyway. It's all superfluous. Leave these at low for best performance. Then clutter draw distance, we put this at short for the exact same reason. Particle quality, leave this at high. For some reason, it's the same as in Modern Warfare, it's the same as in Warzone. Leaving particle quality on high actually gains better performance in certain circumstances than putting this to low. We still don't know why, but just do it. Just put it on high and reap the rewards. Particle quality level, however, I'd recommend you putting this down to low. I'd say this is kind of similar to the texture resolution option where very low looks terrible um, and you don't lose out on much, if anything, by just turning it up a little bit to low um, and you're still getting the performance gains of turning it down a little bit. Then bullets, impacts, and sprays. Personal preference, I leave these on uh, because I like them, but they have no effect on performance, so completely up to you. Shader quality, we then want to put this on low as well. This is another little thing to do with lighting uh, that really doesn't have much effect on the visibility, but has decently large gains in performance by turning it down a little bit, doing it down to low. Then shader optimization, this isn't actually a option, it's just showing you how shader optimization works. Interesting that they added that in there. Keep tessellation off, it's a nice visual effect for a campaign, but definitely not something we want for multiplayer. Terrain memory, leave this on max, it allows you to use up as much memory as possible for uh, textures at distance, and using that maximum, we gain some nice performance. Then, on-demand texture streaming, off. 
really, really bad. I don't know who in their right mind would use this. Downloading textures as you play the game. That sounds bad. It is bad. Leave it off. Streaming quality, low. Don't need this any higher. Don't really understand what it does, but it gives FPS, so keep it low. Volumetric quality, a big one. Volumetric quality is all to do with fog, clouds, and how lighting works with them. Keep this low. This is an FPS hog in games, so we need to make sure this is on the lowest. Then deferred physics quality and water caustics. We want both of these off. This is to do with water effects, water physics. You don't need these on high. A lot of the maps don't even have water that you actually use, so you're not really gaining any visual effect or niceness from turning these on. You're just losing more FPS, so keep these off. Then, shadow map resolution, very low. Uh, this can be brought up to low if you find the very low shadows to be just too horrible. I personally don't mind having them on very low. They do look kind of terrible, but it makes the game run as well as possible. If you can't stand the low shadows, then you can go up to normal. You will lose a little bit of performance, but it makes the shadows look just as good as they do at ultra, having them on normal. Just make sure you don't go above normal, then you'll have problems. Then screen space shadows, keep these off. Spot shadow quality to low. Uh, we'll skip the cache for a second, just to say spot cache. We wanna make sure this is low as well. And then cache spot shadows and cache sun shadows, keep these both on. What this does is it allows certain shadows that need to be accessed uh, to display uh, on multiple occasions, they'll be stored in the cache, in your RAM. And turning this on makes that process far, far easier for the game to do, and you'll get less stuttering and better performance overall. These are massive settings. They were massive in, in Warzone and in Modern Warfare, and in Modern Warfare 2, they're going to be just as important. Then, particle lighting, keep this too low. Ambient occlusion, definitely off. That's another big performance hog. It's all about soft shadows. It, it, it's all extra nice visuals. Doesn't actually help with visibility and eats up performance. Let's keep this off. Then, screen space reflections, off. Weather grid volumes, off. And we get into post-processing effects, finally, where we want to turn the NVIDIA reflex low latency to either on or on plus boost. Now, how do you decide this? Well, I'll tell you the simple answer first. Try both of these out, go in game, see which one gives you the better overall performance over a few games, do some benchmarks, figure it out. However, the actual description, if you just want to have a decent idea going into it, well, if you are in a CPU bound system where i.e. your GPU is pretty damn strong, but your CPU is maybe older um, or weaker, which for a lot of gamers is probably the case because we put a lot of money into our GPUs uh, and then we buy a kind of simple CPU that does the job. For that situation, put on on plus boost. It even says on the side here, CPU bound cases on plus boost. However, for me, I've actually got a really strong CPU is pretty much just as strong as my GPU, and a lot of you guys might also in, be in that situation. For that, you want to just select on. That will give you the best performance. But as I said, try both of them out. That's the best way to know which one works better for you. On rather than on plus boost works better for me. And then very simply, depth of field, world motion blur, weapon motion blur, and film grain. We're going to put all of these two off or zero because they are horrible settings and you never ever want to use them because they make visibility terrible. And then finally guys, within view, we've only got a few settings here. Field of view, make sure you max that out. I used to say turn this down a bit because you can gain some FPS, which you can by turning your FOV down a little bit. There's less on the screen and therefore you might gain some frames. But the advantage of visibility and gameplay of having 120 FOV is a game changer. Consoles have the FOV slider now, uh, so we don't have the advantage over the console players as much now. And for that reason, it's even more important to have 120 because the last thing we want is to be at a lower FOV than the consoles. So get that up to the max. Then ADS field of view, put this on affected. This enables the effect where the, when we do an ADS with our gun, we maintain a high FOV. 
if you had this set to independent, you would be zooming right back into that default FOV and it would make the visual recall of the gun pretty horrific. So make sure that's turned to affected. Weapon field of view and vehicle field of view, these are both completely personal preference. Try them out, see what works better for you. It's not really a difference for visibility or for FPS or anything. So not, I'm not gonna recommend anything for this. I've left them at default because they look fine to me. And then for the first person and third person camera movement, put these both to least so that the screen doesn't move as much, helps out with visibility a decent amount on top. If this video has helped you out and boosted your FPS, then leave your results down in the comments below. That'll be really awesome to see what your FPS was before, what you've ended up at after. Have you gained 20 FPS, 30 FPS or more? That'll be really, really awesome to see. Also, leave a like on the video to help out the video in the algorithm. Get this out to as many people as possible so we can all enjoy those sweet frames and good visibility in Modern Warfare 2. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll have more Modern Warfare 2 videos coming out very, very soon. So stick around. I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.